Welcome back! Game over cancer day two. And while we were on our little break, we actually got two new donations. So I'm gonna read them out real quick before the run starts. Uh, from Canster, we had $15 saying, only day two and you guys have already raised 300 bucks? Can we break 1K this year? Here's 15 bucks to upgrade Shredder's Revenge to Gnarly Blood Trail. And then we also got a, a dollar from uh, Bro uh, Broken Dylan saying, good luck, Carter. I bonk you from afar with the good luck leak. All right, and speaking of Carter, we have Carter Freak coming up with Metroid Dread Unrestricted Any Percent. So I'm going to pass it on over and let's take it away. Uh, hello, everybody. I'm Carter Freak. Uh, we're going to be doing some Metroid Dread today. Uh, this category has had a couple of changes over the past couple of weeks, so we're... Uh... We're going to have some interesting things happen here. Uh, I have my commenta uh, commentator, Satorha, who's going to be helping explain some things as I'm doing the run, so... so uh, go ahead and introduce yourself, Satorha. Hi, uh, just like you said, my name is Sat. I am a fellow speedrunner. I'm a lot newer than uh, Carter and like uh, peers, just to select them, but I will try my best. There is a lot of moving parts in this run, especially much much later so i'm gonna try my very best to explain as much as we can so whenever carter feels like they're ready i think i'm ready so uh i'm gonna give you guys a countdown from three so three two one go all right so much of the early game is actually pretty similar to other unrestricted routes or any percent routes that you might have seen over the course of the last multiple months many of the changes that we, the route has seen in the last maybe a month and a half affects everything past the mid game. And I will try as best I can to explain everything that's happening when we get there. But Artaria is the first zone of the game, pretty standard stuff. Uh, right away, within the maybe first minute and a half, we're gonna encounter a glitch called the Pseudo Wave. It basically acts as a stand in for one of the late game uh, upgrades you might be getting, which is the Wave Beam. And essentially, what's happening is in some actions, Samus's like hitbox alignment is a little wonky. And on the first two that we'll use when we get to the top of the big climb room that is coming in two rooms, uh, Carter is going to slide and then jump into a ceiling. What happens is that Samus's hitbox is misaligned just for a little bit, and we use that to essentially shove her cannon into terrain. So any shot that's fired during that small time period will travel through the terrain and hit whatever's on the other side. What we use that for right now, actually, is to do a trick called Elaine Skip. And Elaine is the community name for a broken enemy that we just completely skipped. And then we have a, another pseudo. This one's extremely tough. The angle is super precise. And we use this to enter the upper part of this Artaria area. And we'll go straight into the right and accomplish what we call Early Cloak. And the, the boss that's guarding the Phantom Cloak upgrade is Corpius, everyone's favorite dog, except Carter. That's actually <laughs> everyone's favorite dog. But this boss is really challenging for a lot of reasons. One reason is that the head, which is the only part of the body, uh, the body that takes damage, can only be hit by missiles, and you have a finite amount of missiles. So Carter's going to try their, like, their very best to make sure that they hit as many as possible in all phases of the boss fight. It is possible, in theory, to skip phase three, which is what they're on right now, by hitting 26 out of 30 missiles on phase two. But if you miss even five, you can no longer do that. And it's honestly not even a big worry. It's only like six seconds of loss, I, I, I believe. Yeah, if you're really, a really good fight. If you're really lucky, you can get headlock too, or if uh, the boss is doing like a spit attack, uh, in the second phase, their head will lock in place. Yeah. And you don't even have to worry about the aiming part because you know exactly where the head will be the entire time. So one of the slower parts of this game happens a lot is atoms. So we every time you encounter an atom traditionally, you have to stop and get your next instructions from him. This is actually one of four atoms we'll be seeing as opposed to one of nine trillion because of a trick that we'll do in the next zone, a Catarist called Atom Safe Skip. So keep an eye out for that. It's honestly one of the most powerful tricks in, uh, in the speedrun in terms of raw time save. So we're entering the first Emmy zone here. What you might notice is that there is zero 
sign of the Emmy, which is the big bad of these zones. And the reason why this is happening is because in this route, if you accomplish early cloak and you proceed to the Emmy zones, you never actually spawn the Emmy in. And strictly because of that, it makes a lot of this movement super, super stressless. And um, you don't even have to worry about the dread part of Metroid Dread. Not yet, anyway. Here we have a trick called the Water Slope Skip. Oh wow, first try. Well done. Jeez. It's a really precise trick, and you have to accomplish a lot of specific inputs while you're jumping towards, and also when you jump off the slope. That way you can skip having to slide down the uh, slope maze and shoot a blob that's way far down. Here we have the Water Platform Skip by using uh, certain animations to keep yourself afloat in the in the air just for a bit a little bit you can just go up there to the right as opposed to going to the left and lowering the water so you can get down to this area and we have our first true major upgrade that we use pretty much all the time for certain things the charge beam slight spoiler this might be one of three beams we get so there's like seven i think we only get we get less than half Pretty standard stuff going here. The next place you want to go is to the final upgrade of Artaria, the Spider Magnet. Uh, on the way there, I think Carter will pick up a safety tank. Yep. This is one of three tanks I think they'll pick up. And it makes a lot of things, especially one encounter in the later parts of the game, it makes it much more bearable. Rehashing the climb here. This is the last time we'll see the climb, I think. Hey, can I just jump in for a second? Yeah. We actually got $40 from Tinkdora. And they said, uh, I'm throwing $40 at tap dancing because Omega and I are out of catnip to throw at Cousin Catnip. So let's see if Chad got more catnip to throw. We got more incentives. Let's try and get them all right now, today, right this second. All right. Thank you. <laughs> throw back. A huge donation. <laughs> That's respect right there. You guys are doing great thank for this cause. Yep. All right, heading down to the first thermal switch in Artaria. This unlocks the path leading towards the uh, spider magnet upgrade that I was talking about. And um, yeah, not really much to say, actually. Carter's doing a phenomenal job just moving through all these rooms at really good speeds, so. Dread has this slight issue where there's a lot of stops, so you can look at cutscenes, but it's also a really good breakpoint since a lot of the movement can be super tough. We're just gonna move all the way through to the second Atom of the game, which is just Atom. Well, no, this is yeah, this is Atom three. My bad, I can't count. Oh, this is Atom three, <laughs> and then we'll never see Atom again for the rest of Artaria, and then only one more time going into Catarus. So now in this Emmy zone, uh, the Emmy is not here. However, in order to actually reach Spider Magnet, we have to respawn the Emmy. That way we don't fight a boss fight that doesn't exist. So what, first try again. So what, what Carter did there is called Magus Skip. It allows us to get up and over that pillar so we can re-enter the door that spawns the Emmy. And it saves a lot of sidetracking we'd have for you to accomplish that otherwise. Now we're heading into the central unit boss fight for the white Emmy. For those who aren't aware, every Emmy has a associated central unit, and we're only going to be seeing three of these. So I suppose there are only seven real bosses to fight, as opposed to the 30 that usually happens. Let's see if I can get this Emmy kill. Yeah, give Carter a little bit of focus here. That should nice. be fine. It should be fine. At worst, you'll have to slide under, I think. Oh, I'm sliding under regardless. <laughs> I'm not doing... <laughs> no way I'm doing that in a marathon. So that Emmy kill is uh, extremely difficult. If you ever stutter on any point moving up to the top platform, and also if you don't plant yourself perfectly so you can start shooting as soon as possible, the kill that Carter did there is not is not doable. Not even close. So big congrats to Carter for hitting the Emmy plant kill even if it's the slide under variation, because honestly, this kill has a lot of victims in speedruns for sure. Artaria is famous for being pretty much 90% of all the runs that ever start. It's 
a very difficult zone to do. So now that we've gotten the spider magnet, uh, we're going to be leaving and never turning back until maybe half an hour in. And that's where the real magic begins. So I hope you guys are excited for that. The way we navigate Artaria later, uh, it's a lot. It's a lot jam-packed in this one area. One of the final tricks that Carter will be doing is called the Cataras Elevator D-Boost. And in order to accomplish that, we have to be very mindful of some positions in the final room of the ply of the flies, the white flies. And we manipulate them such that we don't have to take a ceiling rail that Carter will pass right now. So I'll give them some time. Oh, this looks really good. Oh, come on, come on. Oh, come on. Okay, nice, fine. good recovery. Nice. So, as you can see, if anything goes wrong with the flies, uh, there has to be a lot of quick reactions to try to get back up. But the fact that Carter even managed to recover from that is a huge, huge congrats. Yeah, even with the mistakes there, it's still faster to do that than to take the, the magnet mm -hmm. across. Yep. Going back, uh, we if, if you have to go back to get the rail, uh, the community likes to call it the rail of shame. <laughs> so, thankfully Carter didn't need to take the rail of shame. The only category it's not the rail of shame is when you're doing dread mode where it's a one hit, so you can't do the apply yeah. D-boost. D-boosts are explicitly forbidden in dread mode, which makes me a little bit sad. It's completely fine. That's a challenge in and of itself. So we're entering the second part of early game here. We have Cataris. This zone is incredibly difficult to do, just like Artaria, but for a specific different reason. Most of the in-between movement is, is kind of okay. And then there's the Adam save skip, which we'll try to explain when you get there. Yeah. Uh, if you like Adam in this game, uh, wave goodbye. This is the last Bye. time we'll be seeing Adam. Bye, Adam. In my opinion. <laughs> bye bye, Adam. Not much else to say here. A lot of uh, Cataris movement up until uh, Adam skip and then slightly after is pretty dead. So uh, if there's any donations or anything, Pretty much for 75% of Cataris, it's a good time. All right, well, at this current moment, we haven't received a new donation, but we are getting very close to reaching our, what, $500 goal? It, it's kind of kind of cool how much money we've already raised so much on day two. We still have some more runs, like the more RTG run that we raised both incentives for. Um, we're, we're actually doing so good right now. We're looking at day five incentives we're trying to raise. So if you want to get Azur Striker Gunvolt 3 to all missions, that's a hundred bucks if you're feeling generous. And uh, don't forget, uh, you can win a Steam Key, if you, I believe, if you give over five dollars. So there, there, there's all sorts of stuff. There's all sorts of reasons. Um, but yeah, I look forward to, to reading more stuff as they come on in. So... During that uh, time, there was a slight tense moment that I almost forgot about. And it's the, the single hell run that we do for a long time going forward, the Cataris hell run. It saves around two or three seconds in order to traverse. And this is one of the main reasons why picking up the Artaria energy tank that Carter did is a safety strat, because any movement done wrong in that, in that room can result in not being able to progress since uh, the, the, the last checkpoint, I think, is the thermal switch that you popped way back when. So it would be another minute of moving. So thankfully, Carter was able to clutch it out. Although, not really, because Carter did a phenomenal job in that hell run. There's, a, there's right. a cool strat you can do for that button there where you can actually shoot it in the heated room directly below. Saves a bit of time. I wish I was more consistent at it, because I would love to show that one off in a marathon, but... Honestly... That, that pseudo is incredibly difficult. Yeah. So. It's just not worth really the risk. Mm -hmm. There are not many runners at all who, de who decide to even attempt it. It's, a, it's far more difficult than the other trick coming up, in my opinion. All right, so Carter is on the second switch of the uh, of Cataris, and we're about to enter Adam's save skip. Just to give a quick explanation, we're going to be sequence breaking Cataris to save a minute and 10 seconds, but it has the side effect of skipping an atom that's on the way on the intended path. So I'll give Carter just a little bit. Get this out. Second try. Nice, second try is really good. So that's a lot more difficult than it looks. 
Uh, I believe the melee that we use to ride the slope down is... There's, there's like two frames that work, and depending on what frames you hit, the resulting B presses to get the, the final, the third to last wall jump, or the second to last wall jump, is super, super precise, so... Oh. Sorry, it happens to all of us. Uh, in this game, Adam works on like a bus stop type system. Gee, I wonder where I've heard that analogy before. Imagine and, uh, a bus. We, yeah, imagine <laughs> a bus. <laughs> Adam is the bus in this situation, and the Adam stations are bus stops. If you skip Adam, he never drives forward to the next stop. So for the remainder of the run, Adam will remain at that one bus stop that we decided to skip. And overall, in uh, long, so slightly longer categories that visit more Adam safe stations, it skips around two and a half minutes to three minutes of gameplay. And this oh. one, it saves a little bit less, but no big deal. I mess up actually, oh, no. so uh, we're just gonna I'm just gonna wait until the ME is out of my way. Nice. That's a little bit bad, but whatever, it's okay. <laughs> Honestly, it's it's karmic retribution. You hit Adam Skip in two tries. The game had to slow you down somehow, man. Yeah, I accidentally grabbed that ledge on the way down. That's what caused that. All right, not much else to say for the rest of Cataris. Uh, we're gonna use a specific strat here. I already messed it up too. Oh uh, no. What was that? I don't know why I jumped up there. That's not how you do that. Yeah, there we go. Uh, doing that uh, as quickly as you can means that the ceiling enemy that bothered Carter on their way in to the, uh, uh, up across the breakable blocks, we, we can just completely ignore it. So, so this is the second E-Tank. This is the easiest E-Tank to get. I'm pretty sure nobody, like there are people in routes that want to skip that E-Tank, they just won't by accident, because it's so free. And that's the second E-Tank that Carter will get. I, and out of three, I think? That's the last one I get. The three, right? Oh, yeah, this is the right. last one you get? Yeah. Oh, that's scary. All good though, makes sense. Now we're leaving, we're about to approach a really long load zone. Pretty much every transport, every teleporter, every elevator we take is accompanied by an extremely long load zone. So... Hey, so guess what? I, I got you covered this time. <laughs> awesome. I know I know you were hinting. I got you. I got you. Uh, on Leary gave us $5 saying, good luck, doggo. Thank you, On Leary. Yes. Hey, hey if, if people want to start a $5 train, this is literally on the train with Metroid. They, I, I don't see a better time. This is one of the best times to just take a drink when you're speed running. It's one of the best times just to relax, stretch your fingers, stand up. Read chat. Do pretty much any, you read chat <laughs> <laughs> at any point. Because uh, when, when the game starts to move again, there's not much time to do pretty much anything. So props to Mercury Steam. You guys gave us a, a great place to just sit and relax. So much like the water slope skip in Artaria, Carter does another slope jump with the Phantom Cloak. That way they don't have to uh, walk up or climb across the entire magnet on the ceiling. We're trying our best to avoid getting hit by the the buzzsaw enemies. I call them Sonics because they're blue and they're fast and they're spiky. They do a full E tank's worth of damage if they hit you, which is incredibly dangerous. But thankfully, Carter has managed to dodge all of them. Now we're hitting our first of two dark rooms. We turn on the power here just so we can access the next major upgrade out of the very few that we pick up on the run. Speaking of, if any of you uh, haven't caught up too much on the recent routing, there's a lot of majors that you might remember that we get that we no longer get. So keep an eye out for your favorite upgrades that we don't get anymore. I'm very sorry about that. We do anything in the name of speed. Got wide beam here. Uh, much like the Spacer Beam from Super Metroid, just triples our, our, our shots. Does a lot of extra damage, and unfortunately, this is the height of our damage when it comes to the beam. Yeah, I was gonna say, so, I don't think there's any other beams in the game, are there? Yeah, I mean, there's Grapple Beam, but that almost doesn't count. Unless you want to Grapple Beam all the bosses. You want, you want to do that? What bosses? I thought we already beat the final boss. <laughs> True. <laughs> I mean, maybe. Who knows? <laughs> It's a mystery. We're gonna try our best not to spoil that, but... These wide beam blocks that Carter is pushing with the charge beam, uh, deceivingly precise, 
because you have to make sure that you are facing solidly forward and the beams cannot be wavering at all because if one of them misses, you have to try again. And in certain spots, it can be incredibly annoying since otherwise you would be moving completely free and uh, kind of in a flow state. So yeah, there's some really silly things with those blocks where like you can be like a couple of pixels off on your wide beam shot and it won't connect because all three need to light up. It's it's pretty silly. Especially like this one that's coming up, this last uh, wide beam block that we're going to shoot. This one, if you like try and shoot when you're falling down, uh, Samus has this like animation where she kind of like recoils with her knees. And if you shoot when she's in the middle of that animation, the shots won't connect. <laughs> It's a, a, a very big worry for a lot of us because it's incredibly annoying. So hopefully it doesn't mess us up here. I just nice. ran the damn door. <laughs> yeah, for sure. Having to do it again is um, another charge of shame. So do you want to talk so about the dumb thing I'm going to do here in a second? Oh, yeah. So we're entering a uh, the, the second Emmy kill of the game, the green Emmy kill. Traditionally, it's not the most difficult, but there is a strat that saves it loses like two seconds on this split and saves three seconds on the next or so. And this trick is coined by another uh, runner in the scene who made it popular. This trick is called Professor Stupid. All right, You'll see why it's so stupid. Good luck. Here we go. Nice. Oh. Oh no. Yeah, the face plates on the Emmy can be incredibly deceiving. Now, if Carter connected the full thing, I would be celebrating already. Because that kill is exactly as scary as it looks. Any misstep and you'll fall into the Emmy. And at the very end, when Carter switched from the Omega Stream to the Omega Cannon to destroy the eye, uh, you can see how easy it is to miscalculate the amount of damage you're doing to the face plate. The fact that they even managed to complete the kill is a triumph, in my opinion, so... That trick is incredibly dumb. And we got the Morph Ball, 20 minutes in. Uh, might be a slap in the face to all those who get the Morph Ball five minutes in, in other Metroid games. Strange decision in my opinion from MS, but you know what? It works out. We skipped the DNF missile. DNF stands for did not finish, I believe. I think that's the official uh, full name. If you get that missile, that's like the greatest missile of shame, so. Loses like four seconds, I think, if we get it. Carter's gonna enter the red teleporter coming soon. Another one of the many teleporters that we'll use. This one is arguably one of the most important as well, since it cuts out a lot of backtracking we would have to do much, much later, so. Well, while we're teleporting, we got uh, $5 from Will Legitimate saying, way to sequ sequence break cancer, Carter. Good job. <laughs> Keep it up, let's go. Speed running. <laughs> oh man. Oh jeez. Yeah, I'm I'm glad to speed run towards uh, cure for cancer and all that stuff. So you know, <laughs> everyone putting their their effort into such a great cause for sure. All right. Uh, one thing that I failed to mention earlier because it's kind of um, it's kind of natural for us now is the item tutorial skip. So there, Carter does some very specific movement, even though it might not look like it. To avoid sliding into certain tunnels, uh, they would morph into them instead. And the reason why is because when we skipped Elaine, or the broken Emmy at the start of the game, uh, that encounter has a flag set very much near it, which tells you, as a tutorial segment, that hidden items can be on the minimap, denoted by a white rectangle on the minimap. And if you slide into a tunnel, which is what you're traditionally forced to do, uh, you would incur that tutorial segment. So in multiple courses throughout this run, uh, they're going to avoid sliding into them and pre-morph into them instead. That way we can avoid that tutorial. And the item tutorial, I believe, is a six to seven second time loss just because. So it's another one of those uh, moments of shame if you do manage to incur it, but in one specific segment. It's, uh, really hard to accidentally, or even on purpose, not skip it, or skip it. So we got the various suit. This is the only suit we'll get, we're gonna get. The other traditional suit, the, uh, the the purple one. What's it called again? I forgot, honestly. We don't even go there anymore, so. Yeah, this is the last suit we're gonna get. 
which might concern some of you for the, the zones that we might be going to later, as uh, traditionally we would be getting the gravity suit, oops, in order to traverse those areas. But we won't be. This route skips way too much now, for better or worse. Do you think it's for better or worse, Carter? Uh, I, I like that we skip a lot of the stuff. I just don't like how the end game is currently. <laughs> <laughs> the, the last yeah. 10 minutes of the run are incredibly tense. Interestingly, it's actually possible to skip the suit I just got as well with some new stuff that we have. But there's kind of like a discussion we're having as to whether or not you're allowed to set up a trick on another file first. We're not really... I don't think there's much of agreement on that yet, is there? Not yet, not yet. And that trick is coming up in around 10 minutes or so, and uh, it's gonna take a long time to fully explain how powerful it is. It is one of the most powerful tricks that we've ever discovered. And uh, it basically jump-started the sub-hour part of the fastest routes. Uh, in pretty much any other run, Carter would be going down to the left in order to enter Kraid's lair to fight Kraid and get a pickup known as the Diffusion Beam. Uh, we will not be going there because it's actually completely unnecessary. So yeah, once again, we're skipping a DPS upgrade that we uh, totally won't need later because there's totally not going to be another boss that we're totally not going to struggle against. Nope. Nope. One of the best parts about the newer routing options is that we skip pretty much anything that we deem as unnecessary. So we're going to be keeping this loadout for a really long time this offensive loadout, as it were. Another train going to Dairon. You know, whenever I speed around this game, I was thinking of having some music on during this load screen, but I don't know. I, I would do that, You need but... the golden eye uh, elevator music. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I just don't want to hit the DMCA stuff, so I'm gonna, <laughs> I'm gonna avoid that. If, if, if I was capable of making music, I think uh, that would be a good time to just have something chill. Something to pass the time. Start singing something instead. That's what I'm saying, right? All right, we're going to be rehashing much of the movement from the first time we entered Dairon. We take a shortcut instead of going up all the way because we pushed that wide beam block when leaving Dairon the first time, so we don't have to go back that way. And this time, as opposed to going to the uh, the power room in order to turn on the power, we're going to be going down into the right to enter this heated room. We would not be able to go here uh, traditionally without the Varia suit. So this is pretty much the only reason why we get the Varia suit. I don't think there's another reason to even get it. Nope. This is if the anyone only wants reason. to solve this, please be our guest. Yeah, give Carter some focus here. Uh, I got the good pot spawn, so we're fine. Oh, nice. So in this Emmy zone, on the magnet ledge that Carter just passed, there's a chance that the Emmy can be standing right there. And it is one of the most infuriating spawns in the game. Uh, many runs have lost very good paces, cough, cough, to them. So Carter got really fortunate skipping that, uh, that spawn. And also in that Emmy zone, there was a tall wall that Carter did a single wall jump using a wall jump and a morph to go over. And unfortunately, that's the only time we see the single wall jump in the run. It's a really powerful trick just to climb uh, long walls without any jump upgrades of any sort. Uh, we don't use it. We don't even get a jump upgrade. Spoilers. I missed space jump already. <laughs> Do you? Yeah. You know, honestly, if we could get it, even if it like lost a small amount of time, I would get it anyway. Space jump is so nice in this game. All right, so now we're at bombs, and after bombs, we're gonna make a beeline for the next area of the game that contains one of the holy trinities of unrestricted. And uh, when we get all three pieces of the Triforce, we can begin breaking the game in half. So get excited for that, guys. Not much else to say here, like we said. We're just going to be booking it towards the next area. This guy right here is Z57. They're experimenting on him, but uh, unfortunately we never get to uh, see him again. In a route, maybe two iterations ago, which I was surprised to learn that it was only in July, I think, is when it started being played. Uh, we actually fought the Z57 just because it was faster to go that way. But 
now it is no longer faster. You no longer see this guy. That, that route was really cool too. Yeah, the route was so good. There's a lot of skill expression in that route, and uh, a lot of places you normally wouldn't go to. You want to go there for fun? Uh, <laughs> pass. <laughs> Just do the old route. Just do the old route. I mean, technically you could. Yeah. I mean, I got the yeah. time for it, given that the estimate was designed for yeah, that but, route. Yeah, but we're, we're not going to do that, though. Yeah. Because uh, going that route, unfortunately, disables a lot of the cooler stuff that we'd be doing. And then this route is, uh, if you've never seen this before, this is absolutely mind-blowing what you can do with it. Yeah, even if you were even if you were around to see the route two no, not even two months ago, like a month ago. If you haven't seen the latest route development, you're in for a treat for sure. Except for the person running the, the route, because it's, it, it's annoying. One of the hardest, I, I think it is the most difficult part of uh, speedrunning this game that we've ever had. The end game for this particular variation. Unfortunately, in Berenia, we have to traverse this underwater segment going towards the next room because we don't have the grapple beam to break that grapple block that Carter's about to ignore. And we don't even come back here anymore, so we can't get a revenge on the grapple block either. We have a atom room coming up. Traditionally, Adam would tell us, hey, stop, listen to me. No, not this time. Not ever again. Nice. That uh, slide jump that Carter uses to get over that water pit without having to grab the ceiling magnet is deceivingly precise. And every time you fall, uh, you lose a piece of your soul. Pretty sure all of us have fallen there at some point. I've fallen there so many times. <laughs> All right, coming up, we've got a infinite bomb jump, which uh, is a staple in Metroid games. So we're going to use it in a very specific way. These yellow platforms that turn red when you touch them are called flash pads or flash platforms. Wow, nice. First try backdoor flash. You don't have to go through any of the underwater segment to get here. With grapple beam, there is a shortcut you can take, which reduces the time loss of going down there to eight seconds. But in this category, you don't have it. So you have to go through an extremely long underwater segment. That's like 40 to 50 seconds of time loss. So Carter getting back to a flash in first try is insane. There's a specific rhythm to that trick. The IBJs, or infinite bomb jumps, uh, I think they obey, was it 150 like, something? Yeah, it's like 150 or like 148 or something like that. Yeah, BPM. And uh, any, any at all variance in your bomb jumps there will cause you to fall far too much and then you will activate the pad again. So right there, Carter sets up a trick called the water bomb jump. By unmorphing out of a bomb jump in the water, uh, Carter can keep the ability to bomb jump in the air. Well, not in the air, but you know, above the water. And here Carter's gonna do another version of the pseudo beam, pseudo wave. Uh, a little bit farther to the right, or to the left. Right? Yeah. Uh, left of left. <laughs> uh, well, right There we now. go, okay. Yeah, there we go. <laughs> <laughs> so the way that that pseudo works is that um, when Samus melees towards the a wall or so, uh, her foot will extend into the wall. And then when you morph, uh, Samus's position is technically hugged against the wall, even though her arm cannon is to the left. So when you morph, you release the charge shot, and the shot starts from within the wall instead. Uh, I think colloquially, we just like to say that it starts from the extended foot, which is in the wall, and it allows us to pass one of the shots through the wall, out the ceiling, and then into that blob. If we didn't do this trick, we would have to go get the fusion, because this is one of the places where Mercury Steam really wanted you to get the fusion beam to progress. We ignore it. Yeah, when this game first came out, like, that was pretty much thought to be impossible. Like, so many people tried to suit that blob, and like, no, nope, can't do it. Someone got it after, like, I think sitting like eight hours on that, got it once, and wasn't able to get it again. Yeah, the techniques for pseudo waves have developed tremendously over the game's entire lifespan. Even now, we're still discovering new ones, actually. So now we're going to go uh, defeat the yellow CU and the yellow Emmy by proxy. Uh, everyone's least favorite Emmy, because it has super speed, much like us, once we defeat it. So it's cathartic to just uh, disable this guy and take his power. We're gonna, after this kill, we're going to obtain the second of the Holy Trinity of Unrestricted. The first being the Flash Shift, which Carter made look trivial. And the second being Speed Booster, 
which unlocks a whole world of movement techniques that we use pretty much immediately in order to speed through the rest of the game. If any of you ever tr uh, struggled with defeating the yellow enemy, here's a tutorial on how to make it really easy. Funnily enough, uh, for in most first time runs, the yellow enemy is the most troublesome, but as soon as you learn that it always comes out that way, the yellow enemy is the easiest of the... I can't even remember how many enemies there are because we only visit three. Is it seven? I think it's seven, yeah. Yeah. It's the easiest one for sure. Well, except for the broken Emmy, but that's that one's a gimme. Who who actually fights that thing still? <laughs> Glitchless runners. All bosses runners. True, on, true, right? true, true, true. Nah, come on. Nah, but in any percent, we don't even know who Elaine is anymore. Alright, so immediately we're going to be using the speed booster to break through these speed blocks and also just to move all the way through this area without having to use any other movement. We're going to keep this speed booster by storing it and then using uh, a speed keep in order to shine spark off that slope. And now, instead of going up to yellow TP, our yellow teleporter, we're going to be cutting through this area instead in order to accomplish the yellow teleporter uh, skip. Oh, that's oh. Not, that was supposed to be a ball, but that's okay. It's fine. Yeah, ball sparking in this game as well. Just speed booster in this game is, in, is, is just a joy to use. Oh, one for the short boost strat. All right, so I didn't think I'd have to explain it here actually, but <laughs> That was really cleanly done. So what Carter did there is a technique called the short boost. And what that essentially allows you to do after Carter has a battle with that missile block is to um, speed boost in distances that normally would not be doable. And in order to accomplish that, we cancel a backwards flash shift before it hits either a wall or a ledge, if I remember correctly. And then by running forward after canceling it, the game really wants to put you at the farthest back flash distance. So when it tries to put you back there, you start running forward. So you can traverse that backwards distance by running forward, and it lets you travel that distance twice, which means that you can cut multiple blocks worth of uh, speed. That way you can speed boost in much smaller distances. That one is one of the easiest places to mess up as well, since uh, there's a door right there. And I think the setup for it is close to the door, to the distance. So you might accidentally go through the door as well. Cutter making it look easy. I hope that's a trend going forward because uh, if you can make the end game look easy, please do. I'm gonna try my best. Speaking <laughs> of, end game is about to officially start here. So this yeah. is, uh, you wanna explain a little bit about the trick that we're gonna be doing here in a moment? Absolutely. So we've, we've, we've accomplished a, the third piece of the Triforce here for unrestricted, the grapple beam. So by combining the three pieces, the flash shift, the speed booster, and the grapple beam, we can use a trick called shine sinking, which allows us to pass through floors uh, traditionally. But in recent development, we've been able to modify it such that we can do other things that you're gonna see pretty soon. And the most notable is called the Axis Q state, the Bamahe state, named after the, the first person who had surviving video of the setup. And what this allows us to do, once Carter sets this up, I'll give them take a bit of time. Nice, I think. Yeah, what that allows you to do is keep a state of Samus right there. You might notice that she's spinning backwards in the air. So this state allows us to interrupt any turnaround state of any sort, whether you're turning on the ground or in the air, hopefully not in the air, in order to face whatever direction you interrupted that turnaround in. So let's say you turn around on the ground and then you jump. You're going to lock Samus's X axis, or I think it's Z axis actually, um, towards that wherever you interrupted. We're gonna use that right away here, doing a backwards underwater uh, pseudo in order to break this blob, which we would need diffusion for, using a water bomb jump to get up to this ledge where we normally would need a uh, gravity suit, and here. So clearly something's not right. Carter is looking at the, the camera, and in other places, uh, I think they're going to look at the background. And that allows us to completely ignore the fact that there's water here. Because, unlike the short boost, where we traverse some distance with the axis skew, we traverse no distance. This is the most powerful trick we've ever discovered for Unrestricted. It's also a source of great pain, but we'll get to that later. Yeah, so actually, uh, if you want to explain, I'm actually trying to keep this trick now. Yep. So from this point on, Carter wants to keep 
the access skew state all the way until a certain teleporter because we require it to progress. And in, or in order to keep it, we have to be extremely mindful of our movement. So Carter here will always respin off of ledges before turning. Carter will try their very best not to turn around in a neutral air state because any turnaround in the air while you're falling in neutral state will cause us to lose it and we have to set it up again. Um, setting it up again means that we need to shine sync, which means we need space to do a speed booster. And we also need space to get, you know, the, 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 shine, the shine sync off. So it's an incredible time loss if you manage to lose it. But that's why we try our best just not to. The problem is with this state, we have to be so mindful of our movement that it might even conflict with muscle memory that has to do with um, how we optimally move around certain uh, areas. So if anyone wants to solve that too, please. I want to move without being scared. Just like here. Instead of just turning around and shooting the blob, instead of turning around immediately and jumping towards the red teleporter, Carter has to unmorph and make sure that they're going to be in a spin jump state as opposed to a normal jump state. You made that look really easy, by the way. Yeah, outside of losing the speed booster, that went really good. We're going to be using the red TP here to get to the orange teleporter. And uh, that's the part where we really need the skew. Yeah, I'm actually going to double check and make sure I've got it before I go yeah. into the yellow teleporter. I think you still have it, I think, but I'm pretty never sure. Hurts to check. Yeah, I'm just, I'm just going to double check just because, you know, yep. marathon. Pray, pray, pray. Okay, nice. I do have it. Great. So we still have the, the skew. Unlike other access skews that might have been in uh, other routes, like months ago or even recently, uh, this access skew can be brought anywhere into the run. So long as you stay in that skew state. Um, and in this upcoming area in Gavarin, past Orange Teleporter, we really, really, really want it. Because if we happen to lose it by some manner of uh, accident, we're going to have to come back to Cataris to get it again. So I'm actually going to let Carter move through this area without uh, any interruption. As it's, it genuinely is that important. Yeah, if I, if, like uh, Sat was saying, like, if I lose the state here, I have to go all the way back up to this, this Teleportal go back through this load sequence again, get the skew, and then go back through the teleporter again, which is another load, so it's it's a really big deal to not lose it. Yep. It is run ending if you ever manage to lose it here, so good luck. Okay, we're at the last step. It's not over. Now it's over. Really nice. Well, a lot of the areas there still. in the tunnels, you can accidentally fall and turn around because we need to be shooting certain blocks as well. Here's one last shine sink for the road. Yeah, and a bonus of the fact that uh, if, if you miss a shine sink, you can just skew, get the speed again. Otherwise, we'd have to leave to the left room. Nice. And then build the speed again. Here we have cross bump skip. You might notice that we sunk into Golzuna's arena and just ignored it. We have to do that shine sync, otherwise uh, the boss won't spawn. Well, the boss won't spawn anyway because we didn't release the X parasites, and that's the trigger. Oh, almost. Oh, almost. Try again. I'm sad. I wanted that so badly. <laughs> <laughs> and um, if we don't shine sync into the arena, the door won't open anymore to leave. Nice. I lost. And this you. is called cross bump skip. That's fine. Yeah, I just get it again. Nice. You were worried about that in practice, by the I way. I was, yeah. And I, I told you, you don't have to worry about it. So that movement there to um, cross the crumble blocks that we would need cross bomb for is something different. There are days where you're always good at it, and there are days where you're just not. But Carter made that look trivial, so congrats one more time. Yeah, in practice, and, I missed uh, that for like 10 minutes. <laughs> yep. And now we're entering the dreaded endgame. So, just to explain what's going on, Carter is going to have to get the access skew state again because uh, they lost it on the cross bomb puzzle or the cross bomb skip, which is completely understandable. And once they get it again, uh, you might notice that they're just going to stand there and turn around a lot. So, just to explain what's going on, when you turn around in this game, for a very small degree, Samus rotates on the uh, on her X rotation. And what we want to do is rotate her a certain amount. Oh, do you have it? Yeah. 
So what we're gonna do is turn around a great deal, rotate her to a specific point, and then try to get a perfect axis skew, which is a frame perfect jump to have her face perfectly forward or perfectly backward. Ah, yeah, Carter misses it there. Unfortunately, the uh, the backup for missing the perfect skew is to just turn around again, because every time you have to break your axis skew, uh, you morph and it resets her rotation. Nice. I think, yeah. So with that, we can speed boost in place and move very, very, very tiny amounts. And for some reason, that allows us to go through collision. So using that, we're able to skip this wall or door, and this is called wall clipping. And I'm just gonna wait here because this is tense. Nice. So by getting partly into the door, storing, breaking the skew by meleeing backward, and then holding grapple and forward to go through the door, you can send your grapple shot through and pass out of bounds without dying. Um, something I uh, neglected to explain is that if you ever enter out of bounds in this game, you will die. But when you have the grapple beam out, you're immune to out of bounds death. So we really need to use it on certain wall clips here. You're making this look really easy, by the way. Yeah, so far the clips have been really good. Yeah. Th that is not easy. This is... Carter, you trivialized half of why we hate this endgame. <laughs> like, what is going on? Magic. So and on this door in particular, Carter's going to jump through it just because there's nothing on the other end. Otherwise, we'd have to use the store grapple method. And now we have another wall clip. Uh, if your hands got tired by watching Carter do it, imagine the fact that Carter has to do all these turnarounds. So in, in this version, uh, in this wall clip, wall clip three, there's going to be a different wall clip setup we use to get into the next area. You are... I'm jealous. I'm actually jealous. <laughs> this is... Wow. I'm just first trying everything. You're going to first try the rest of Escape too. I hope so. You hope so. This is the... So with... We're actually coming up to the part that I'm probably most scared of right now in the run. Yeah. Uh, I'll explain real quick and just let you work on it. So with this wall clip in particular, uh, there are robots coming out of the wall, and because we want to store so we can shine spark through the wall into the next area, these robots can be a massive issue. Carter is going to deal with it by leaving the middle robot alive if they can. That way it's not going to be uh, in the way when they eventually jump up and spark through the wall. And on the other side of the wall is the power bomb warrior. Uh, like a guardian for the power bomb, and we're gonna give Carter as much time as he need, uh, as they need to focus on the fight. It's an incredibly difficult fight to do quickly, because with this energy level, any hit from phase two is death. So, best of luck. Here we go. <clears throat> Notice here that Carter only has the wide beam. This is the only real boss fight we fight, and it's a shame we don't have our updated arsenal for it. Nice. This is where Carter takes a single hit. Okay. Nice! We're through. That fight, especially on phase two, if you take any hit at all, you're dead. So... Man, Carter, you're making this look way too easy. I'm actually on PB pace. Yeah. So... <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. Carter, making everything look easy. Today is your day. Well, we still have uh, a couple still more. have a little bit more. Yeah, arguably wow. the worst part of the new route is coming up here yep. shortly. Just to give Carter time to focus, I'm going to very briefly explain what's going up next. In order to skip the Raven Beak fight, which is traditionally the final boss of the game, we're going to do a Shine Sink in order to go uh, down and towards the Raven Beak X, which is the technically like last part of the Raven Beak fight. Uh, and after that Shine Sink, we're going to be doing a certain movement into a load zone. And um, the reason why we have to do a very specific movement is because right behind the load zone is a death zone. 
so we need to enter the load zone without accidentally going into the death zone. And I would explain it there, but Carter needs this focus right now, so best of luck once again. Thank you. Hopefully we get this. This part's the scary part. That's fine. Okay, nice. Nice! Okay, one more. The load zone. Okay. Alright. So, there's a lot of things there that don't look too scary, but trust me, Carter avoided death like twice just now. Oh, man. Alright, now, now we have death the death Arbor. Death. <laughs> okay, so, we don't have the Metroid suit for Ravenbeak X, so we have to use regular beams, and there is a chance that RBX just ignores us and eats us anyway. So... This is it. Yes, let's go. Yeah. Oh okay, um, just because Carter's on PV pace, uh, we're gonna just go through escape, and at the very end, there's a hyper beam door that we need hyper beam for. But instead of using the hyper beam, we're going to walk whip through it. It's walk whip four, the last one in the game. So I'm just gonna let Carter run. This is incredible. <laughs> Everyone in chat, please give Carter your support. Carter's gonna do one more shine sink here to cut through needing an extra power bomb for this area. And after that, just gotta pray. Nice. We combine that with getting an axe skew as well. So at the, after this point, we're just hoping that we can get the wall cliff in a reasonable amount of time. This is where the wall clip starts. Best of luck, Carter. Come on, first try, please. <laughs> We're on pace for sub 52. Nope. It's all right, you got, you got two more. Unbelievable! Unbelievable! <laughs> I'm so sorry. It's not over. We still have to clip through the wall, but... Come on. I'm not even a commentator anymore. I'm just a spectator like you guys. <laughs> Carter putting on a show with the most hated part of anything in the speedrun. We're really close. We should be okay. Yeah, yeah, we should be fine. Like Just 20 seconds wait a little there. longer. Yep. And it should be safe now. <laughs> nice! With that, Carter has finished the most difficult part of this game. Eight minutes of straight, annoying tricks, run-ending segments. They've completed it all. First try, that's a PV, isn't it? Yep. 5209's PB for me. <laughs> Everyone, please give Carter a well deserved round of applause for making this endgame look so easy. How you feeling? Um, pretty hyped. I honestly didn't think I was going to PB in a marathon, but uh, especially with this route, because like there's so many things that can go wrong in the endgame. Jeez. I was here. I can't believe I was here for this. And with that, Metro Jet is completed in under an hour. Under 55 minutes, under 53 minutes. Oh, man. Shake what it. What an incredible run.
we're gonna be talking about this for a while. <laughs> this is uh this route existing is not marathon safe. No, it is very it's this is <laughs> I was debating whether or not I should just do the storm skip route, but I decided uh you know, I've I've been finishing enough runs, I feel confident enough that I can pull this off in a marathon, let's just give it a shot and Well, it worked out. <laughs> So, we have a lot of extra time because of uh, the estimate being based on the old route. So, I've never done boss rush before, but I can I can fill some time with boss rush. <laughs> yeah, we can actually see the guys that we skipped across the entire run if uh, if we're allowed. Anyway, that's up Should to that's up to Strizer, I guess. Yeah, uh, you guys actually, yeah, the, you have to go ahead. Do the let's do the boss rush. Let's, All right, let's see it. All right. Uh, while you guys are doing that, we actually got uh, five dollars from O'Leary saying exclamation Fanto, and an anonymous gave us fifty dollars. Let's go! And they said gas, 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 <laughs> gas, gas, gas. Oh no! But yes, amazing run by the way. Oh man, I wasn't even the one running the uh, running the route, and. I was sweating. Hey, hey, you're, you're feeling it, right? Yeah, yeah, dude. As soon as we get past wall clip one, it's like, all right. And wall clip two, a little bit more stress. Wall clip three and four, Shine Sink, Loading Zone, Raven Beak X. All of those spots are run ending parts. So I've, I've literally you... never done boss rush, not once. So I don't even have a time for this, but we're just going to go with it, I guess. Uh, no. Do you want a countdown for this? <laughs> uh, on the stream end? Uh, sure. Yes, you can give a countdown. I feel like it's a speed run event. We got that. <laughs> All right. Totally. Well, in uh, three, <laughs> two, one, go. All right, so, Carter, I don't know if you want to handle the boss uh, explanations or me. You but... go for it. I don't even know All the right. order of the bosses in this thing. So, <laughs> uh, Corpius is the same, except we have one less missile and one more energy tank. The one less missile is the real issue. Um, because we would have 30 at the start of a regular run, but instead we have 29. And that means that the amount of missiles we're allowed to miss for phase three skip goes from four to three. Uh, not that big of a deal. I'm just going to blitz the tail here to send it to phase three, get our two cheap missiles while sliding under, and then complete the Corpius boss fight, which is one of 12, I believe, in boss rush. And uh, Im immediately we're gonna go into, I believe, Kraid. This is the guy that we skipped when we skipped the fusion beam. And um, the name of the game here is whenever the mouth is open, just toss missiles into it. Not much else to say. Will you do the single wall jump swing to the magnet? Please do. Oh. Yep, so here are the single wall jumps. This is the first major uh, point where we would, we would be using the single wall jump. It is the one of two. And uh, that allows us to avoid shooting the belly to force Crave to drop some spikes that we can use as stairs to get to the magnet. And um, incredibly precise to do it four times in a row or even five times in a row. Carter made it look super easy. And then when he, uh, when they parry the claw here, uh, there is a optimization you can do to shoot and then aim up left to avoid the parry cutscene we would be taking. So yeah, that's Crave done extremely fast. For some reason, the Artaria Sentry unit is after the Kraid fight in Boss Rush, which makes absolutely no sense. But here it is, and the fight is the same as it is in Vanilla. And after this, we have, I think it's the Dragaiga. Oh god, yeah, how do you fight so, this thing? <laughs> yeah, I have, I have no idea. We literally never go here anymore. I don't think there's a single glitch route that sees Drog. So, uh, missiles are better on the... Oh, are they? Okay, thing. all right. Yeah. <laughs> See, this is how much we don't know about this guy. We never go here. Uh, we just shoot the ceiling tentacle to make it go into this weakened state. We shoot the side buttons in order to lower the water. We do have flash, okay. Yeah, we do have flash here. And then when the water is down, Drog gets thirsty, and it's in this moment of weakness. I'm so sorry, Drog. We just wanted some water. And then we just do this twice, and the fight's over. I genuinely don't remember any of this. When was the last time you fought Drog? Uh, over a year ago at this point. <laughs> Just a rehash of what happened the first time. And then Drog is dead. So now we're going to the Gavrin 
robot fight. Oh, no, is this the Gav robot fight? It is. Yeah. So in this fight, which we don't see anymore again, since we never go to Gavra in the regular way, uh, which forces us to fight this boss. Um, we would, in Unrestricted, have Screw Attack, but we don't because... Unfortunately, they don't like us, so we have to use Missiles instead with limited health and limited resources. I believe it takes 60, or slightly over 60 to defeat the boss. So Carter's gonna have to weave back and forth just so they can avoid getting hit. Oh, that was close. And yep, there goes the bot. After which I believe is SQ. Uh, I'm gonna actually give Carter uh, some time here because Carter is difficult. Uh, not Carter, SQ is difficult without certain upgrades, namely the screw attack, which allows us to just blitz SQ. So I don't even know how you're supposed to do this fight normally anymore. <laughs> I think you have a uh, flash and space for this. You can only damage SQ when the electric shield is down. Oh, you don't have space. That's right. It's actually genuinely be like forever since I've done this. Yeah. <laughs> nice. Oh, I was close. So as you can see, any hit from SQ at all is extremely dangerous. And also we get to see the X parasites return, the ones that we usually just always skip. And um, this would give us these storm missiles if we even got them anymore, but we don't. And now we have Experiment Z57, the guy that we ignored after uh, another route change a month ago. This fight, uh, we would be fighting in a very different way in a regular route if we entered the boss fight like usual in a normal uh, speedrun. But we don't get to do that here, so we have to fight the boss normally. Name of the game here, just shoot missiles at its face when it allows us. We got triple spit here, which is the best pattern for that. After which, we have to shoot the tentacles on the walls and ceiling with storm missiles. And now we're gonna play Flappy Bird. You do have space jump for this, if yeah. I remember. So this is a dev intended uh, quick kill for the Z57 fight. First, you have to play Flappy Bird, which is an excellent design choice. Then once you get the speed boost, I unfortunately messed it up. No, I think you have time here. Oh, come on. That is unlucky. Uh, oh. Well, you're so supposed to kill there, but... Uh... Yeah. It's fine. It's been... It's How long has it been since we fought Z57? So. Way too long. Yeah, we don't fight Not this normally, guy anyway. regularly. Yep. So now we have to see the DLC version of the boss. Which is essentially the same as Phase 1. Um, nothing really changes here, except for this. And he's dead. Down for the count, and now we have the twin robot soldiers, or twin robo soldiers. Essentially the same as the first version, except we have plasma beam this time, so we can just sit there and shoot really, really fast and try our best to melt both of them down, potentially at the same time. Like right here, where Carter is overlapping the robots with, the, uh, with, with their uh, beam shots. Both taken down. I think the next one is Golzuna. Okay. Uh... So this this is the boss that we normally skip and then with, with a shine sink to go to the right for cross bomb skip. Okay. Carter tried to get a speed booster there in the limited amount of space uh, possible in order to shine spark the uh, Golzuna's butt. And that does half its health. And uh, using it twice will instantly defeat the boss. Uh, they're gonna go for it again right here. Nice. Oh, I have uh, screw attack now. Yeah, you have screw attack. So, for some reason, uh, the, 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 the devs give us enough space to get a shine spark for some reason. Gee, I wonder if they wanted us to discover that we could do that. And it makes the boss painfully easy, but the shine spark part, getting the speed, there's not enough space. There's not much space at all. So, Carter getting it even once after not fighting Golzuna for a very long time. And this is another DLC boss when it comes to the unrestricted route. It's the final uh, mocking soldier. And um, this one does percent health damage, actually. It'll do more damage based on how much health you have. So very important that we don't take damage here. And also, you might have noticed that Carter made that fight look really fast. That's because they actually have the updated arsenal. And whereas we have to fight the red Chozo warrior with um, only the wide beam. Oops. 
You have to deboost through the. Oh, you're uh, gonna try and short I was boost? gonna try and do the short boost, but I'll just Works do it normally. Yeah, I don't know why they put this CU here. This is the wave MECU, which we would uh, defeat to get the wave beam in regular routing, but I don't even think we'll ever go back here. There's no reason to. You can do a, a shine spark by taking the hit from the turret on the right ground, but it's really difficult. So I don't blame Carter at all for skipping on it. And here is Dad Boss, the actual last boss of the game that we never see anymore. Oh my god, that's not a good start. Oh dear. Uh, yeah, you're fine. We're gonna go for gold skip, which is how to skip Ravenbeak's Aeon shield recharging and entering invulnerable phase. By getting two storm locks. Oh no. I didn't mash fast enough. Yeah. Uh, just to tell you how fast you need to mash the beam during that cutscene in order to skip the gold phase, which we are in right now. It's around 10 per second, I believe. Here, Carter gets very lucky with a very early parry, which allows them to go back into that DPS phase. Now we have Ravenbeak phase two. Uh, if he gives you the Gatling pattern, you can immediately just melee and then hold free aim to enter the low uh, leaning pose, and the Gatling will never hit you. So any Dreadrunners out there? There's a small optimization for you. When it's too close to the wall like that, unfortunately, it no longer applies but it's not that big of a deal. It takes 50 ice missiles to go to phase three here, assuming that no other beam shots are made. Yeah, I'm just, I'm not bothering really weaving. You can do yeah. this where you get a little bit extra damage, but. And here's phase three. The name of the game here is try to dodge as many hits as possible because a lot of Ravenbeak does tons of damage here, even with the gravity suit. And uh, unfortunately, the only time we use power bombs on any boss is when Ravenbeak throws out the sun. And uh, we put cross bombs in between ice missiles in this phase because cross bombs deal the same amount of damage as a single ice missile. So it's like you're getting an extra ice missile every two or three. Yeah, that's fine. You're full on HP now, so we're chilling. And this is what we would fight if Carter didn't skip it in record pace. In their in their main run, and that's boss rush. Eight thirty nine. That's a really, honestly, that's really that's really good. We're having never We're done not it. Not fighting half <laughs> of these bosses ever <laughs> for like half a year, and that's it. Yeah, that's boss rush. The DLC boss rush was uh downloaded, and Carter makes it look trivial. Nice. Uh, and, and so is, is that two PBs in one in one section? I guess that counts as a PB, yes, given I have not done it before. <laughs> Let's go! Double PB for day two. Uh, but thank you so much, Carter and uh, Satora, for, for doing this, for being here. Yeah, thanks for having me. And, uh, Absolutely. Thanks for raising money for such an awesome cause, because, uh, you know, cancer affects probably most people have had someone in their life that's been affected by it. So yeah. it means a lot to me. And I appreciate everybody donating for the cause. Yeah, I, I couldn't have put it better myself. Uh, thank you so much, everyone. Thank you again, runners, or runner and commentator. And we'll be back. We'll be taking a short break. Grab your chicken tendies. And we'll be back with Super Mario RPG, the two-hour challenge that, chat, you unlocked with all your incentives. So let's go.